Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. Today we're going to take a look at setting up an index page using Spring Boot and Spring MVC. This is a very simple example. We're going to use a Thymeleaf index page and set up a Spring controller to bring back that index page. We're going to be using the Thymeleaf templating library to develop our web content. And what I've created here is a very simple uh, Thymeleaf template. And it's actually a Thymeleaf template because up here on, on the HTML, I brought in the, the Thymeleaf namespace. So this makes it an actual Timeleaf template that will get processed by the Timeleaf templating engine. So in IntelliJ, we can click up here to view it in our browser. I'm going to bring that up now. And this is the HTML that's uh, being displayed in the browser. So there's no styling on this right now. It's just basic HTML and it's being shown in Firefox. So what we want to do today is set up a Spring MVC controller to render this template in Tomcat. So I'm going to come over here and create a new package for controllers. And I'm going to call it an index controller. And to make a, a spring component a controller, we annotate it with at controller. And now what we want to do is we want to add a method in here and we'll have it be a public method return a string value and I'll call it index doesn't get any parameters and we're going to return the string of index by convention what's happening here is we're returning index and that is telling Spring MVC what view we want want rendered so by returning index Spring MVC is going to look for a Timeleaf template by the name of index. So that's what ties the, the two together. We don't have to say index HTML, that the HTML is implied. So just index will work. Now what we need to do is tell Spring the, the path that we want this map to. And we do that through the request mapping annotation. And we just want this coming up to the root of the application. So what we have here is a Spring MVC controller through the controller annotation. We've mapped the request at, uh, mapping to the root root of the context, and it's going to return the string index. And then we're going to bring up the index uh, time leaf template. I'm going to run this now. So now we can see that it's running, and before when we were looking at Spring Boot applications, it just started and stopped. Now we've brought in the Spring Web Context, and it's actually running an embedded Tomcat container. We can see at the bottom here that Tomcat has started on port 8080. And I can go over to at the local host and take a look at this. So here we are running on port 8080. That's my Timeleaf index page and I can prove that we're running on that. I'm going to go in and change that template. So I've changed that. I'm going to have to cycle Tomcat for the changes to be picked up. So I do that by clicking on this green circle arrow and you can see that the context is now restarting. And I'm going to go back over and refresh this and now we can see my, my typo here. This is my changed. So just to recap what's happening here is we have our index controller. We've marked it as controller with a request mapping of root to the root context. We we're turning back the string which maps to the index HTML time leaf template. And then we came over here to the, the Spring MVC application. We did a right click in IntelliJ and clicked on run. This brought up, it ran the, the Spring Boot application. And we can see this is right out of the Spring Initializer. This is annotated with the Spring Boot annotation, Spring Boot application annotation, which causes it, it to run in an embedded Tomcat container. So in this module, I just wanted to show you how to run a Spring Boot application, bring up Tomcat, and run an index application. So we set up a, a Timeleaf template for the index page, a very simple HTML index page. And then we created a Spring MVC controller and set up the mapping for that controller and then ran Tomcat. So now we could 
deploy this as a war to a regular Tomcat container, but through Spring Boot, we are actually running an embedded Tomcat. So when we start up the application, Tomcat is running, and we can see the application run within the Tomcat, Tomcat context. <laughs>